fleas. Tiny insects barely visible to the naked eye, yet largely responsible for the single deadliest pandemic known to history. They say know thine enemy. So let's take a deeper dive into this parasitic group of insects. Welcome to the Insect Spotlight Project, a channel dedicated to shining a light on insects, spiders, and any other creepy crawlies that get left out of the ecologic spotlight. Today we're talking about the order Siphonaptera, better known as the fleas. Fleas are a parasitic order of insects with over 2,500 different species. Though many of these fleas look very similar to one another, they're often specialized on just one or a few species of mammal or bird. Fleas are actually a parasitic evolutionary offshoot of the order Mycoptera, more specifically the family Nanochoristidae, though it'd be tough to tell just by looking at them. For one, fleas are incredibly small and are only going to be around 2 to 3 millimeters. But in case you do have a chance to see one up close, here are some of the distinguishing characteristics you can expect. Fleas are wingless, even as adults, which is in the minority for insects. Instead, they get around by jumping, propelling themselves on long hind legs up to 8 inches or 20 centimeters, 100 times their body size. Fleas do have long hind legs, but it's not just beefy legs alone that allow this amazing feat. Flea legs have an elastic protein called resilin that when compressed stores potential energy and when released fires the flea as an arrow released from a bowstring. Fleas are also flattened laterally, so they look normal from the side and a bit two-dimensional from the front. They're coated in small hairs and depending on the species may have a row of bristles on the face or behind the head, referred to as the genal comb and pronotal comb respectively. The presence or absence of one or both of these combs is actually really helpful for flea identification. Even number of bristles on the comb can be used to parse out different species. Fleas have small, simple eyes, and though they're not readily visible, they do have antennae. They often keep them tucked away in grooves on their head and then can pop them out when needed. And we can't forget to mention the infamous piercing sucking mouth parts. Unsurprisingly, this is also where they get their scientific name. Siphon means tube in ancient Greek, and terra means wing. But the name is not siphon terra, it's siphon aptera. Aptera meaning without wings. So siphon aptera both describes their piercing sucking mouth parts and their lack of wings. Fleas are holometabolists, moving from egg to larvae to pupae to adult. Females lay the small white eggs either on the host or in the direct surroundings of the host, such as nests or burrows. Oftentimes, the eggs are laid on the host and they just roll off into the nearby surroundings. Females can lay hundreds or even thousands of eggs across their lifetime. After a few weeks, out hatch little wriggling flea larvae. These larvae are mostly blind, a whitish translucent color, coated in fine seedy and up to 5 millimeters long. Because of their translucence, you can often clearly see their gut after they've fed. Flea larvae feed on what they can find, and often what they can find is other flea eggs and adult flea fecal matter known as flea dirt. A pretty efficient system, I guess. After anywhere from a few days to a couple of weeks, the larvae spin silken cocoons. The silk is pretty sticky, so nearby debris often sticks to the cocoon, creating great camouflage. The pupae can fully develop in under a week, sometimes a little longer. However, just because it can emerge from its pupae doesn't mean the flea is going to. Flea pupae will lie dormant if there are not signs of a nearby host. However, once the pupae picks up signals such as vibration, heat, or increased CO2, out pops a fully developed adult ready to feed. Adult fleas live only a few months or so, but in that time they do a lot of feeding and a lot of reproducing. Priority one is usually feeding. Most fleas need a blood meal to provide the energy to mate and lay eggs. Apparently evolution had to really hardwire this order of operations, as many male fleas have evolved to have testicular plugs, which block sperm passage and then dissolve after their first blood meal. Similarly, 
The first blood meal is what triggers the maturation of the ovaries in the female fleas. Once the fleas are fat and happy, they can turn their focus to mating. Using their antennae, males are able to detect females through chemical cues. Once the pair meets, the male will take its antennae and place it on the underside or venter of the female. And now stuck together, reproduction ensues. Females will store sperm in their spermatheca to fertilize their future eggs, and they'll continue to mate across their lifetime to ensure a constant stream of flea babies. This constant reproduction, ability to lie dormant for periods of time, and aptitude for infesting host surroundings makes them a pain to get rid of. Not to mention, they spread a variety of diseases to us and our pets. And you can't talk about fleas without talking about the Black Death. The disease is caused by a bacterium, Yersinia pestis, and this bacteria is vectored by the oriental rat flea, Xenocyla chiapis. As trade between Europe and Asia continued throughout the 1300s, rats from Asia started hitching a ride to Europe, and on those rats, fleas were hitching a ride, and on those fleas, Yersinia pestis was catching a ride, and that's how a third of Europe died. Yersinia pestis is not eradicated, and cases still do pop up here and there. But antibiotics and sanitation have come a long way, mitigating transmission and also making it treatable. Fleas can spread other diseases as well, such as murine typhus, also known as fleaborne typhus, and cat scratch disease. Fleas spread cat scratch disease between cats, and if those cats scratch or bite us, they can give it to us, hence the name. And if you're unfortunate enough to accidentally consume a flea, you can also get tapeworms. So that's fun. There is also tungiasis, which is not a disease spread by fleas, but rather an infestation of jigger fleas, tunga penetrans. These fleas, instead of feeding externally, burrow into the skin, most often the feet, and it's understandably very painful. These can be found in South Central America and were unfortunately introduced to parts of Africa as well. Outside of humans, fleas can be nasty for your pet. Feline infectious anemia is caused by a variety of bacteria that attack red blood cells. Also, pets can easily eat fleas and then get tapeworms, and don't underestimate allergic reactions to flea bites and flea debris either. Despite being largely responsible for the deaths of millions of people, Fleas have some upsides, too. Like flea circuses, where folks attach little harnesses to fleas and let them pull carts or lift objects with their jumps. Perhaps this charming attraction does not make up for their mass killings, but hey, it's something. This is normally the part of the episode where we talk about how to conserve the insect. Please do not worry about flea conservation. Instead, let's talk about how you can avoid fleas. Please get your pets on a flea treatment. Don't give them more than directed, that's not going to give them extra defense, but be consistent. Even if you have an indoor cat and you think you don't need to worry about it, you do need to worry about it. I personally have helped give an indoor cat a flea bath and they were not happy about it. If you do get fleas in your home, there are some treatments that can kill the fleas off your pet, but you can't just stop there. There are likely already flea adults, larvae, and pupae in your home. So get your pet on a treatment plan, wash everything, declutter, vacuum a ton consistently. Diatomaceous earth is a popular option to spread on the carpets. There are also some chemical applications you can use, or if the infestation is really bad, you can call in a professional and they can chemically treat your home. Just remember, it's much easier to prevent fleas than to get rid of fleas. Thank you all so much for listening. And if you like the content, please remember to like and subscribe to keep up to date with future orders. And if you have any flea stories or any fun or not so fun flea facts I didn't cover, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear about them. Peace, y'all.